is so, so the liquidity pools are actually making the price. Yes. So yeah. in Uniswap, the price is literally just the ratio of the two uh, members in it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not sure that same uh, truism holds for Uniswap V3 because it has asymmetrical liquidity. Yeah, I, I don't think that that same mechanism holds for Uniswap V3. It does hold for Uniswap V2. Because mm. in Uniswap V3, you can add liquidity one-sided and it's not gonna affect mm. the price at all mm. because it's out of the money. Right, right. So in Uniswap V3, that uh, math doesn't hold anymore, but in Uniswap V2, it does. And I, I think that much of the liquidity on Pulse Chain is going to be Uniswap V2 based because Uniswap V3 isn't licensed for forking. Mm. They introduced a clause which gives them a two-year window for ex exclusivity. And that clause, you know, hasn't been two years since it's existed yet. And I also, I, I kind of like the way Uniswap V2 works. Um, it's it's nice. Yeah. You know, I, I like the way Uniswap V1 works. Um, it's more gas efficient, but it just has the downside that you have to always route through one central pair. You can't have like ERC-20 to ERC-20 direct pairs. So you have to do like two routes.